Hey, I'm Emily Swallow, and I am with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, viewers and listeners, wherever you are in the world right now. This is Hellblazer Biz, and I am Chris Gordon. Thank you for tuning in. It has been a while, I know. Uh, what can I say? It's um, yeah, The day job is really, really busy. Um, so I apologise that I've not brought any guests to you before now uh, for quite a long time, but I'm still there. I'm still back. Hellblazer Biz is going. I've got a GoFundMe at the moment. Please, please, please support that as well because there was some really high unexpected costs. I don't normally I wouldn't ask anything, but um, please, please, you'll see that and go out there to keep the show up and running. It'll be absolutely fantastic. I really, truly appreciate it. Anyhow, the guest I've got now today is from a show that I've fallen in love with. The show, not the guest, but the guest is awesome too. <laughs> uh, and it's basically it's one that's been a huge hit on the new Disney Plus channel, which is in the States at the moment. And it is The Mandalorian, which is the latest chapter in the Star Wars universe. Um, got to say, when I first started to watch the show, or when I heard about the show, I was like, hmm, okay, see how it goes, see how it goes. Uh, but with John Favreau at the lead, uh, this has got to be one of my best shows I've ever seen. It's absolutely amazing. I love it to bits. And not only that, she is also in Supernatural, which, <laughs> global phenomenon, it's on the 11th season, I believe now, or, um, or 12th even. I can't remember. It's even more than that, I think, isn't it? I, I've, I've not seen it, but I know it's such a phenomenal, phenomenal show. Um, and I'm, I will be catching up on that one too. And she's now on the screens in Seal Team as well, which is another show, a yeah, top show of mine. So without further ado, um, I will not keep you any longer. I know it's too late already. <laughs> I introduce to you the fantastic, the brilliant, and the lovely Emily Swallow. Everyone, I have seriously got the pleasure of the company of Emily Swallow uh, today. So, hi, Emily. How are you? Hi there. I'm great. Yeah, excellent. Thanks for. Yeah, I really appreciate you joining me. Um, you know, obviously, people will know Emily um, from Supernatural, SEAL Team, The Mandalorian. Although you don't see you don't see your face in Mandalorian, but they know you're there. <laughs> yeah, I promise it's me. <laughs> yeah. So you know, there's a plethora of other shows as well. It's not you know, they're, they're, I think they're the three main ones I've. I've been inundated with people going and saying how cool it is um but obviously you know this meant the mentalist you've got loads you've got a nice backlog of I've been backlog. very very fortunate i've gotten to work on some great stuff and you seem to go from one to another which i'm going to talk about later anyway which is even you know it's, it's really fortunate really lucky um mm -hmm. obviously just proves how good good an actress you are so. <laughs> well it might seem i go from one to the other but that is not true <laughs> yeah between filming like actually yeah that's very true because you've got the filming for one and then you might have like a yeah six months a year between them <laughs> yeah, yeah we never know it's always feast or famine it seems you have like three different things that are trying to coordinate schedules and nobody wants to make time for the others and then you have nothing for a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's when you know beans on toast for uh, <laughs> for tennis exactly. yeah oh, you've oh, been yeah. there <laughs> oh yes <laughs> And it's, I mean, I, I know, I'm going to speak to, I've spoken to, speak to a lot of actors, actresses, directors, and, and it is, it's, that's something, it's a misconception, which I've just affirmed through yourself, <laughs> is that people think they might see you in all these shows, but they are, there can be such a big span in between, and it's such a, you know, it can be such, it's, it is, it's a vocation, it's a, it's a way of life being in the industry, in the entertainment industry in that way. And you've got to have the passion, I think. Otherwise, it's oh, quite easy to fall by the wayside with despondency. Yeah. Um, but then, obviously, then you land great roles and <laughs> yeah, it comes through. You finally get paid for your work. You know, I always, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I was out in LA recently and I was working on SEAL Team, but one of my friends said, are you working tomorrow? And I wasn't shooting. So at first I said, no, I'm not. And then I said, actually, yeah, I am because I have two auditions tomorrow and <laughs> That's all the work that I just don't get paid for. But that's, I mean, often harder work than when you finally land something and you get to shoot and go to set and everything. Because then you're, you know, you're working on something and trying to get a job and hoping that they like you and not knowing how it's going to turn out. Very, 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 very true. Um, I'm still waiting to be paid for my hobby, which I this <laughs> <it's like> do. <doing laughs> right. It is. I mean, it's it's cutthroat. I mean, I, you, obviously, it's your career. It's your livelihood. I've I've got my other career here, but okay. to try and push this show, um, to try, for, for example, to get a guest like yourself on the show, I I know that I kind of have a 
uh, an inkling of the of the hardship um, of being able to just land one. That's obviously absolutely amazing. I get you on the show, but there's like you know there might be a hundred emails that I've, I work tirelessly, like you say, with the auditions and stuff off off yeah. air where people don't see me. I'm not doing nothing. It's I'm, I'm tirelessly writing to exactly, publicists, yeah. and begging We're publicists, kind of all please. The time. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's uh, it's frust- it can be frustrating, and if you don't have that passion, like I said, then yeah, you, you just you could easily fall. By the- Sorry, my headset falling off. You could easily fall by the wayside. <laughs> um, I mean, so I mean, we've discussed that. I mean, people know you from the TV shows that you've been on, but however, you know, you I've actually begun your career a lot earlier than that. I believe with stage work as well, because you are oh, a very yeah. accomplished stage actress too so well thank you yeah no welcome. i love theater and i uh yes i did um i graduated from the nyu mfa program in 2004 and honestly uh at first i thought well why would i ever want to do anything but theater because i i loved theater and i still do love theater um but one of the things i realized is that in terms of pay it's very <laughs> hard to make a living as a stage actor and um you know some of the things that i I thought I might not like about television, you know, the fact that you don't, you don't get much rehearsal, if at all, you know, you shoot things out of order. It's a much quicker process to get the final product. Mm -hmm. Um, But that in and of itself, I I found so many interesting things that made me start to realize like, oh, okay, theater. Yes, I think theater is kind of my deepest love. But, um, but I did, uh, my first TV gig, I think was a a uh, few episodes of Guiding Light, the now dead yeah. soap opera. Um, but I just started to dip my toes in a little bit more and a little bit more. And I used to do primarily theater with a little bit of TV. And now I do mostly TV and voiceover with, I still try to do at least one play a year, but that mm-hmm. last year I didn't do any plays. So it doesn't always work out. <laughs> True. Because yeah, if you're getting really busy in the TV side of things, then yeah. I mean, the theater, because so much in intensity i mean i love the theater i used to do it myself when i was in, in the t te- i studied drama oh, so oh, I, yeah. did, I did not much i did a couple of plays and, and music a, a, a pantomime which was amazing it was a pantomime dame it's the funniest thing i've ever done it's, it's i have done pantomime too my yeah. high school sweetheart and i won the district thespian competition for the best duet pantomime <laughs> <laughs> which now just sounds ridiculous but if i mean it was it it is an art form in and of itself, and, and oh, to yeah. communicate well and to find humor in that, and uh, to to find the story without being able to use words is a really fun challenge. Oh yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It is. It's a, it's a, a class act sometimes, but I love that part of it. Um, what's your favorite genre? I mean, out in, in the theater world as well. What's your like classics like Shakespeare, or do you like contemporary? Oh, I don't have a favorite because it really just depends on. Honestly, it depends on the production. You know, there's, I have been in some productions of some amazing Shakespeare plays, but the, the elements around it were pretty standard. So, you know, the text is incredible and you can't take that away. Mm -hmm. Um, but the rest of it might not have been that inventive. And then, um, I will be honest, it, it very often happens that I get a, a TV script and especially with an audition where you have so little information, you very often don't get the whole script. And I think like, oh, this isn't what is this? This isn't that exciting. And then when I find out, you know, what the whole concept is and I get to the set and I talk to the director and I see all the other elements, then it winds up being something spectacular. So for me, um, it's really about, I mean, I, I do focus on my character first and foremost, because I also feel like even if everything else seems like it's falling apart or I don't connect to, you know, another actor or the director, like I still have that, that I can focus on and, and that's an, an endless um, well of, of things to explore. So I, I kind of feel like if I'm having, if I feel like there's nothing else to find, it's my own fault because I can, I can constantly dig deeper. And I mean, I haven't had many experiences like that. I've, I've been lucky to work with a lot of really fantastic co-stars and directors and everything. But, um, but yeah, there's always more that you can find even even if you're having trouble with some of the elements that are surrounding you. Fantastic. Thank you. Nice insight there. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just, it's, I mean, I'm just trying to stump now. You've stumped me. <laughs> Although I will say, to sort of answer your question, um, I haven't gotten to do a whole lot of 
comedy and I would love to. And I think it's partly because I have been fortunate to play a lot of like really strong, Mm -hmm. serious women, um, in dramas. And so sometimes like you, you get known for something and then people don't really want to see you in something else. Um, but I love, I love doing comedy and I'm really just like a big goober in real life. So (laughs) it would be fun to get to do that. Excellent. Have you seen, I know it's on on Broadway at the moment, the play that goes wrong? I haven't but, seen it. Haven't no. you? Oh, the, I've seen them all. I've, those guys, I've met, I'm th- I went down to London, well, I worked okay. in London last year, and they okay. did um, a movie mischief night, where they did improv for, the, for about an hour, just over an hour. They took questions, they took ideas, scenarios from the audience. Wow. It was like, give us a name, give us a, a location, tell us if it's... That's a, brilliant. And they just did that, and they did for an hour, just over an hour, just complete improvisation. And I went five times because I went five different shows. I saw five, I thought basically five different plays. Yeah. <laughs> and their comedy is spot on. And yeah, I know they're in Broadway. So if you get a chance to go and see the play that goes wrong, I think they've got a new one coming out over there as well. They are, yeah, they've got, like, they've got three or four of them. They're just absolutely spot on. It's slapstick comedy at its finest. <laughs> it's brilliant. My son is howling. We went to the theatre last time. They did Peter Pan Goes Wrong. And they, he, his laughter, oh, wow. his laughter was one of the loudest. Everyone was looking around because he was like belly laughing. It was. <laughs> oh, that must have made you so happy to hear him laugh like that. Oh, yeah. He's got my humour as well. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Schadenfreude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So we're kind of moving, obviously, working on Supernatural as well. That's been a, such a long established series. Um and obviously, I'm very far behind on this one. I'm afraid with Supernatural, I can't. Say. I think I'm still on season three. Um, cause That's I, okay. There's a lot of seasons to to try to catch up to. There are, yeah. So, how did that feel coming into that show? Because I mean, you came in. It's already been established. You, you're the you're the darkness. You, yeah. <laughs> you are like an well, entity from beyond time. <laughs> it. I mean, it was definitely uh, the most out there part I had gotten in television, at least I've gotten, you know, in theater, I've played some really, um, epic characters. And I think that the, the stakes are often much more fantastical and higher than a lot, you know, a lot of at least American television network television is very naturalistic. Um, so first you asked how, how was it going into a, a long running show like that? And I have to say, I think one of the reasons the show has been so successful is because Jared and Jensen and Misha and the, you know, the actors that are the regulars Mm -hmm. are just so welcoming and they're so generous and so open hearted and so humble. And they love um, getting the new ideas that come with the new people that come into the show. They're ready to play. And you never know when you go into a long running show, if you're going to be walking into an environment where everyone's already kind of like, okay, this is how we do this. Just, you know, see where you fit in and when they're going to say, all right, this is new now because you're here and what's it going to be. And that was how, that was my experience with the darkness. Um, And yeah, it was, I mean, how do you prepare to play (laughs) God's sister? Mm -hmm. Um, But the thing that I, I so appreciated about what the writers gave me is that um, it was always so easy to connect to her, her humanity and her, Um, I mean, you know, the premise was she had been wronged by her brother. I mean, she had been locked up in a box or a cave or whatever it was for thousands and millions or whatever, a long time. (laughs) So it's understandable that she might be a little ticked off. And then she comes to Earth and she's trying to find him and she can't find him. And all she wants to do is talk to him. Um, So she had some anger management issues. She didn't really act out very positively when she got frustrated. But, uh, excuse me, that's my phone. Um, but it, I could always come back to that, to that, because I could identify with that. Who can't? That feeling of, of feeling misunderstood and, and feeling, um, like you want to explain yourself and nobody will listen. Um, and then just, you know, all the little like sibling annoyances. Mm -hmm. And that's something that wound up being so much fun working with Rob and we didn't get to do it on screen that much because the scenes were very, very serious. Um, but (laughs) off screen, we just had so much fun together. And I mean, we just like really played into the, uh, the silliness of the, the sibling rivalry. And we were kind of, we were always kind of hoping that there would be like one scene at some point when there weren't like angels and demons and witches Mm -hmm. and all the battles that were like, 
it would just be the two of them, like, you know, poking each other and yeah. like, you're the dummy. No, you're the dummy. Cause <laughs> that also, uh, they were both just really, really stubborn people or deities or whatever they are. <laughs> uh, but we've gotten to explore a little bit more of that this, yeah. this season, season mm-hmm. 15. Um, cause the episode that we shot together was a little bit lighter. Even, I mean, I don't know if you can say that since the whole season is about him basically destroying the earth, but within that there's some comedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is some light <laughs> with the darkness. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Excellent. No, that's really good. I mean, it's great when you can actually get into a place and, and develop your character and, and have mm-hmm. that opportunity to do so. And like you say, with, 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 um, a fellow cast and writers and stuff, just to be able to. To to have you know that it's like a, you got freedom to a certain extent where you where you're allowed Absolutely. to go and do that and and establish yourself over time uh, and it does sound I can't wait to get to it to be honest because it just it sounds like one hell of a <laughs> should just skip some seasons you can go back and watch them later yeah that's true that don't come until season eleven so if you're only on season three you got a long time I know yeah I've got several months worth of binge watching it's hard to binge watch <laughs> that one because I mean and there's so few shows like that anymore that have that full twenty two episodes a season yeah yeah I, I used to watch it before our children my wife and i used uh-huh. to sit and we could binge watch like all night it was just like i think it was 24 and stuff so and that's what we started with supernatural and we did start binge watching it but then mm-hmm. the children came along and that yeah was, it's yeah, not really one you everything. want to watch with your kids <laughs> no <laughs> not at all um mm-hmm. i've got a question for, regarding this from sophie who is at sasha 466r Okay. Um, I don't know. She's she's a fan. Um, she came in with uh-huh. a question, which is great. She says she loves you as Amara slash the Darkness on Supernatural, and she thinks it's one of the best seasons. Uh, she's wondering what the atmosphere is currently like on set, because obviously it's very sad. It is the final after fifteen seasons. This is the final season, so she's just wondering what the atmosphere was like mm-hmm. actually on set <laughs> currently. <laughs> um, I mean, it's still incredibly positive because I think like everyone everyone loves the show so much. Everyone loves working on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you can tell that people genuinely love coming to work, even the people who have been there for all 15 years. And that's sort of unheard of, like to have, you know, obviously there's Jared and Jensen and Misha who have been there for 15 years, but then to have members of the crew that have yeah. been there that whole time. Um, so overall, it's still very joyful. It's kind, of, it's kind of bittersweet, but I also think, you know, I mean, I can't, say what the last episode will be like but for now it's uh you know just trying to still enjoy the last season and it it's uh there's still so much joy that's going into making the show and and I mean personally I know that some fans will definitely disagree with me because they think that it should just run forever and ever and ever and ever (laughs) but I'm glad that they they made the decision to end it on their own terms and on their own timing and you know didn't wait until like it got canceled or it or they were yeah. forced to do something. I think that that's a a difficult move to make when you know you could continue doing it and continue to make money and continue to have success. But I think probably for the storytelling, it's better because it gives them a chance to really, um, really make some some well thought out decisions about how they want to bring the story to a close. Yeah, I do agree on that actually because I know there's a my show started because of a show called Constantine. Um, oh right yeah back that's how i knew it and i I loved that show and that was one which was an amazing show but got cancelled uh mid-season sadly Uh and they couldn't fin they didn't finish because it was it left it on an on a a cliff yeah that's the worst and and so yeah so to be able to go for such like you just said to go for such a long time and actually have everyone involved being able to the writers be able to draw to a close and and have a proper ending a proper closure for mm-hmm. everybody will be is is great um it's not yeah. sad obviously because it's, it's come to an end but it, it's great i think there's something recently shows how much people put into a show as well i think it was the big bang theory they that video have you seen it the their final table reading no i haven't oh, that is so sad because again that's you know like a popular show but they did their final yeah. table reading and they were all in floods of tears, uh, and you know, throughout the whole thing as they were reading the script, it was it was really, but it showed it just shows now how I'm much gonna, heart people put into with it. With you, I'm going to go YouTube that. Yeah, I do it's it's really touching, really, uh, but it just shows how much of heart everyone has and puts into a show uh, mm-hmm. behind the scenes. It's great, and it becomes a family. It really does. Oh yeah, well, especially that long. It's you know, you, you probably see them more than you see your own family. <laughs> yeah. 
Cool, excellent. I've also got Laura Laura Saxon. She's an actress in the UK, mm-hmm. and she's asked. And this, this is a, a zany one, which I'm probably sure you've heard. Which one of the two brothers do you like the most? She's because <laughs> they're both as gorgeous in real life. She says. So. I know. Well, I feel like it, it's it, you kind of just have to flip a coin to choose between them. But uh, Amara definitely has a, more of a soft spot for Dean and. I have worked so much more with Jensen than I have with Jared. So just based mm-hmm. on that, I have to say, <laughs> I'm a Dean girl. Okay, there you go, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent. And uh, moving on from Supernatural, obviously the, the reason that I am I caught your eye, because obviously I've not seen Supernatural that far. The reason you mm-hmm. caught my eye, sorry, not that you caught my eye, <laughs> get my words right, is the, obviously The Mandalorian. Star Wars right. universe. This is this is what oh, drew. You've me. seen that? You've oh, heard yes. of that? Oh yes, I have. Yeah. Oh. Yep. I, I, <laughs> just a little show. It's a tiny little show. Maybe off the yeah. side. <laughs> it's not big. It's not big at all. Very is modest it? little yeah. production. Yeah. Not. <laughs> I mean, that entire show is a, a huge phenomenon. Star Wars, a global phenomenon for, for I can't speak phenomenon for over forty years. For which I mean, I yeah. can proudly say that I remember. I, I remember going to see Empire Strikes Back in the cinema, and uh-huh. I, but I was told my parents took me age two to see A, a New Hope as well, because obviously they had, they had wow. to take me along with my sister so, <laughs> back in 1977, so I was there at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, you were bred on it. <laughs> yes, I mean, how does that feel? That's got to be, I mean, there's obviously got loads of questions, but that yeah. coming into it. I mean, it's, it's unreal. I had no idea what the, first of all, like, how well the show would be received. I mean, I thought it was wonderful. I, I, while we were making it, even though I knew so little about anything that didn't <laughs> yeah. involve my character, um, John Favreau is just, a, I mean, he's, he's incredibly smart and creative, but he's also the part that you don't know until you work with him is that he is, he's just such an incredible team leader and he's so great at bringing together an ensemble of people and getting everyone on the same page and getting everyone focused on the same vision while also welcoming everyone and all of their creative uniqueness and all of their eccentricities and inviting people to, you know, not to feel like they have to fit into any mold. Mm-hmm. Um, so I knew that what we were making was good. I felt like artistically it was good, but I had no idea how the fans would receive it. And, um, and how well everyone would receive it. And it's just been, I mean, it's, it's unreal. It just makes me giddy. And I actually just did, um, a fan convention, a wizard world convention in Portland, Oregon this last weekend. And it was, I've done them for supernatural before, Mm -hmm. but it was the first time I'd done one since the Mandalorian came out. And I've just, I feel like the luckiest person in the world because I just (laughs) have been greeted with so much joy and positivity and people are so excited about it. And, little girls, you know, love the armorer and love what a badass warrior she is. And that just makes me really happy. And, and it's, I mean, I feel like it's that much more shocking to me because, um, I have experienced a really enthusiastic fan base. I mean, the the supernatural fans are phenomenal. Yeah. And so even with that, this is like another leap beyond that. Um, (laughs) Just in terms of, and I, I don't mean in terms of like comparing like one is better than the other. I yeah, just mean I in know. terms of like the fervor that I'm mm-hmm. experiencing. And it, it I mean, it it's, makes me so happy that people are getting so much joy from this thing that we made. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is right. There's several points there. I mean, you answered about three questions in my <laughs> so I'll take Okay. That's no, great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is brilliant. I mean, the show, I think when I first heard about that it was coming out and it was being made, I was like, oh, okay, because I didn't know the concept of what was behind it. Just thought Mandalorian. Yeah. I was thinking Boba Fett and I was like, yes. <laughs> so it's like, but waiting just to find out what it was about. And then when it came, it just, I think it was just, yeah, blew me out of the water. It's each yeah. episode is got the cinematography of, of a feature film, uh, yeah. the budget behind what came on and every, you know, all the, the locations, the sea, every the props, everything was absolutely perfect. Like, like you said, John Favreau, um, I think has just he's a guy with he's got the right vision. 
Sure I, does. I mean, all the people who've been talking about all the Star Wars films lately and the way they've been going, and it, you know, I enjoyed them personally. I, you know, I've been a fan forty odd years, and I still loved. I went and I enjoyed the show. I didn't get into the politics. I didn't get into whether mm-hmm. you, know, the, the, you know, you know, the rubbish that goes on <laughs> on Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> about it all about who should be with who or why the cut. You know, cut. my gosh, it's got I stay away to, from all of that on <laughs> Twitter. I mean, yeah, it makes me laugh. It's like people go on about a color or something like that. It's right, you're talking about people who are meant to be aliens in space. Does yeah. it seriously matter? It's like Star Trek when they're talking about someone who's coloured on the Uhura was back in the sixties. Like, really? It's like they're, uh-huh. they're they're in space. They've got aliens all around them. You got a Romulan. Yeah. You got a, you know that's what it is. But yeah, that's how I feel about it. I just enjoy it for what it is and the, the movie that's made. But John Favreau um, really took it back to the original trilogy. He took that vision right yeah. back and and i think that's what's helped it be such a success um as well as baby Yoda. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> but yeah his it's vision gracious. yeah his vision is amazing he's such and i didn't realize until afterwards that he was obviously the the spoiler alert the heavy armor the, you know, the little heavy armor yeah. the heavy the heavy mandalorian yeah, yeah so yeah um the big guy i didn't realize that was him either until like oh uh-huh. man. like alfred hitchcock taking part in his own creations <laughs> yeah so yeah he's got that and i mean What's the other one as well? It's a, it's a, a few as well. You also mentioned being women as well. For women in film, having mm-hmm. you count yourself as the man armorer, I've called it, not the man, the, the man armorer. I like it. <laughs> Call it in one. I'll hashtag that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and keep it. Uh, uh, yeah, but being that as a, you know, as a female kick ass character like it is. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, again, that's something in, not just in Star Wars and a lot of, a lot of series now, we're actually finally being able to get decent good characters for women because historically it's not been the same and i mean the, right. you, there are issues with the award ceremonies which just yeah <laughs> male dominated which is wrong um right. but to have something like that your character you've just admitted it when you went to that convention having little girls and and it's a role yeah. model for you that must be yeah it's such a fantastic feeling it is well and, and i really appreciate that um that she's a, a woman, but it's not a big deal that she's a woman. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just <laughs> matter of fact. Yeah. And, uh, and John's decision to make her a woman was just kind of like, you know, they were creating this character and they were like, well, why not? And I do think, um, I mean, there, there's lots of strong Mandalorian uh, women that are in like the Clone Wars and mm-hmm. those an- yeah. animated series. But um, in terms of the, like the Star Wars movies and the, and now this, it, it's, I think, like one of the first times that the like more spiritual leader is a woman, because usually you know that's like Obi Wan Kenobi and Yoda, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, and they've they've been dudes. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, I I also feel like, man, it's such an interesting time that we're in because while we do want to have more representation, I also think like if you're a writer and you're writing a story and you really have a vision of this character as being like a man or being, you know, a white person, like Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want people to be so in their head about it that they sacrifice their vision. So it's an interesting trick to try to find the balance. But, uh, but in this case, it's just so, so great that, that they decided, yeah, the armor is going to be a woman and that she is like the coolest presence in the room that she Mm -hmm. commands authority without, I mean, I don't think anyone, was aware that she was capable of the force that she shows in that last oh, episode. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that, that it just kind of comes out of nowhere because yeah. she doesn't need to use it the rest of the time. No, she just walks in the room and everyone's silent. And it's, you know, everyone just commands respect just at the very sight. You know, ev- all the other Mandalorians in the area just immediately fall and follow that respect of that, yeah. of that leader. It's, it's just phenomenal. And like you say, it doesn't matter that she's a woman or not because even I didn't think at that time because you're right because that's how the how well the writing is how well you act it is the fact that it doesn't matter on your colour or your sex or genre because you're a Mandalorian that's all you yeah. think when you're watching the show that's it you are a Mandalorian who mm-hmm. gives a damn what you know anything else that's that's how it is you are a badass Mandalorian and that's where you should be so which is also so liberating for me as an actress because you know this is now like the role that I am the the most known for and it's kind of freeing and <laughs> liberating that it has nothing to do with how I look because yeah. I'm just so used to that being a factor and how I get mm-hmm. cast and having to make sure like I always look my best and um you know that just kind of comes with the territory but it's just so much fun that now this character that everyone knows me for is one where like you don't even know what I look like it's <laughs> great 
<laughs> it is. It's that's one. That, yeah, it's definitely a good, great concept of the show as well. Uh, what's your favourite part? I mean, you've obviously of the series, not just filming it. As you've looked back and watched it, what's mm-hmm. your favourite moment? Um, well, the one that comes to mind first um, is in the third, uh, the third chapter. And part of it could be because when we had the premiere, we got to watch the first three episodes okay. um, all in a row. And so it was this theater full of like all the actors from the show and all the directors. And then we also had a few different Mandalorian clubs, um, mm-hmm. you know, these cosplay clans um, from various places. And cool. so that moment in the third chapter when he is down and out and all the bounty hunters are on him and he's trying to protect the child and you don't know what's going to happen. And then the whole squad of Mandalorians come out. I mean, the theater that I was in, everyone just erupted in cheers. (laughs) And, and it is such a beautiful moment because I mean, just the way that Deborah Chow, the director built the tension is, is brilliant. But then Mm -hmm. also I think for me, you know, knowing that, that um, Din Djarin had elicited a lot of uh, distrust from the other Mandalorians. Yeah. And, you know, they're not quite sure what to think about mm-hmm. him. They don't know if he really belongs. But then when push comes to shove, they protect their own. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful. I think that, you know, we all hope that we will have that support from the people that, that, we, that are in our, our tribe or our, you know, group of friends or our family or whatever. Um, it was just such a dramatically exciting moment, but also such a, an uplifting moment. It was, yeah, watching it as well. I was just like, <laughs> you know, that moment. Yeah. Of, it was just like, whoa. But you're right, it was like, you know, you, you have personal differences, but yeah, when the time, it is, it's a family thing. You know, you might have your little spats internally. Um, but when, it, yeah, when the, when the, when the, when, when it, that proverbial stuff hits the fan, <laughs> yeah, know, everyone comes together. <laughs> it's just absolutely. It's absolutely fantastic. And I mean, obviously, you know, there's been the phenomenon about Baby Yoda. When 50 years old, you reach, look as cute, you will not. Oh, thank you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, he's obviously just stolen the show with the child it's as well. Insane. I feel like he's crazy. now like everyone's child. He is. It's just, it's just, I don't know what they've done with him, but the way they've done it, it's just... And I think I think my favorite I've got to say my favorite baby baby Yoda moment is when um, you know Mando and that are fighting uh, and on the Kara is it five I can't remember the name uh-huh. yeah Cara Dune yeah, yeah. Cara Dune <laughs> I love the show can't remember the name oh how embarrassing <laughs> yeah when they're they're rolling around outside and then all you hear is like and they look up and there's little baby Yoda with a little cup of soup <laughs> got to be the cutest he's mm-hmm. just he's just everyone's naughty little child isn't he it's like all right stay yeah <laughs> he's like well, he's, he's, he's like he's Nemo so as well. <laughs> He's like, what? Nemo. You know, it's like, do not touch yeah. the boat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and it's so, it's such a brilliant concept in terms of uh, revealing the Mandalorian's character too. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, one of the things that, that was so, a big question mark for me before it came out was, okay, how are people going to receive a main character who you can't even see? Yeah. Like, are they going to be able to connect to him? Are they going to attach to him? And you bring in the child and like all of that just goes away because it completely humanizes him and the mm-hmm. way that they interact. Yeah. You don't have to see him. You no. know what's going on. Exactly. And I mean, that must be so hard as well for you, especially as the armor. I mean, you've said obviously it's, it's liberating for you to do that, but to mm-hmm. act your way through when no one can see your face, no one can see your facial expressions. It really must make your physical as well as your vocal um, acting talent a lot stronger because you have mm-hmm. to portray it much more in different ways than just being able to obviously, you know, uh, show emotion on your face, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be, I mean, in, in real life, I am somebody who like, I use my hands all the time. Um, and I just couldn't do that with her because mm-hmm. what we found, um, and we were shooting episodes one and three at the same time. So we had Dave Filoni and Deborah Chow, those directors who were working together with all of us who were in these suits yeah. um, and these masks to find out, what the language of movement was and what translated and what might be distracting and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, what would take away from what you're trying to get people to understand. And that for me, it was really fun. I think especially because of my, my theater background and having done, you know, way back in grad school, having done like mask work and, and doing a lot of physical work, it was really a, a fun challenge to, um, to have to be more aware of that. I enjoyed it. 
Fantastic, fantastic. I've just got a shout at Ode to Rowena on Twitter. She actually asked a question about how different it was filming that to Supernatural, but obviously we've kind of mm. gone in there because of the mass, you know, the, that sort of physicality difference there as well, which yeah. sort of, sort of, I think has explained it in where we've been chatting for five minutes or so. So I'll, I'll just throw mm-hmm. her name in because she did ask the question. So <laughs> I will say, though, uh, I'll add one more thing, which is that um, one of the first things that I... I found when I was working on Amara was that it, it felt like she would be a lot more powerful if she um, moved very minimally because it felt like mm-hmm. when you have somebody who's that powerful, I think trying to like show it by making these big movements, it just like you don't buy the power at all. You're like, yeah. oh no, you're not, you don't have anything. And so uh, maybe that was something, you know, having worked on Amara for a season and because once again, Emily in real life is not still, I am <laughs> always in motion, but kind of ha- trusting that, that minimal movement and that e- efficiency and economy was definitely useful yeah. for the armorer as well. So that's sort of a point of connection for the two of them. Fantastic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, The more silent, it's just more menacing, isn't it? When you just, you don't have to exude mm-hmm. your power. You are. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we all remember like when our, when our parents would get mad at us, like yeah. the worst <laughs> Parts would be when they were just standing there and you didn't know what they were going to say or what they were going to do. Oh, like, yeah. The most terrifying. Yeah, it was. Especially if you knew when they were silent, you are in big trouble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Cody, oh sorry, Chad Roddy's asks, can we expect more of the armor in season two? Probably not allowed to say. but <laughs> I'm not allowed to say anything. I, I hope people want more of the armor. I mean, I, I personally feel like... Uh, there's more to discover with her and she has more to do to help Din Djarin, but yeah. I don't know what will actually happen. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> the, the mouse is watching. <laughs> I know it, it sort of makes things easy when you're not allowed to say anything because then. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's great. I mean, I'd, yeah, it's, it'd be fantastic if we do see, uh, people do want to see the armor. I'm sure you're aware that your Twitter, you, I, mean, I watch your Twitter and it's just exploding with people and the outpouring of love and, and support of the armor. It's I, amazing. Yeah. It, it, I just so appreciate all the support that, that the character's gotten. And um, it makes me feel so happy that people like her so much. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. I know I keep looking over there, it's because my cat is sleeping right by my laptop and keeps giving me evil looks. <laughs> she, looks <laughs> like, she looks like a grey Yoda, to be honest. Never but, trust <laughs> I know, that's why I'm like. <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay, moving on then. Um, from the Mandalorian as well. Obviously, sorry, I know I, there's time pushing, I will talk all night to you, believe me, <laughs> about Star Wars and Mandalorian. Um, currently, again, you are on our screens. Um, you know, this is it. You are you're flooding our screens here, Emily. It's great. It's great. As you say, you've been very fortunate. It's amazing. Um, is Seal Team, yeah. which is another huge show that yeah. I'm a very big fan of from season one. Oh, good. I, I love that show. It's um, it's just I love that action and you know that kind of thing. And I mean, I've actually spoken to Neil Brown Jr. Um, oh, I love Ruffin him. Prentice, uh, Justin Melnick, and Judd Lawman. Uh-huh. You know, they've all been on the show. Um, I'm trying cool. to get the others as well. So it's great that I get you too. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've just come in season three now, which is amazing mm-hmm. we're we're about to come up to your i think your first episode in the uk this week oh probably, okay uh, i think it's episode three you're in isn't it the first one um, um i think the fourth one is my fourth first one, one. Uh, i'll have to check then see whether it's whether it's that one or not but again you've come in uh-huh. as, the, as the doctor as a psychiatrist as <laughs> and physiologist uh, physiologist sorry not psychiatrist mm-hmm. yeah, physio- this is my words I'll, I'll edit my bad all those out. P <laughs> doctors they <laughs> yeah. all just get blended together yeah they do don't they <laughs> excellent so again um, I've missed my questions here sorry I've just so the sh- obviously with the show SEAL Team again it's got it's own style you've gone from Supernatural which is obviously a supernatural show with it, where you play right. <laughs> an omniscient being through mm-hmm. to playing a kick-ass in Mandalorian through to a physiologist in SEAL Team with working with some kick-ass guys as well so mm-hmm. well, and, and again that's got to be another, similar to what you said about Supernatural that's another family that you've come into and they yeah. just, are they just as zany as they are as they appear because they just look like they, they are. have so much fun on that set <laughs> Yeah, the, I mean, the chemistry between all those guys is just incredible. They're great. Yeah, they seem to do loads together offset, offset as well, I think. And I think my, I think one of the best bits for me was when Justin was on my show. We, t- we texted him to arrange it, and he texted me a picture when he was driving in the truck. On, se- on set, he was driving into an action scene, and he was like, he took a selfie with him and, um, oh, I can't remember the, uh, the other chap he was with at the time. I think it was uh, uh-huh. AJ, actually. And they're both in the truck with their guns hanging out, and he's like, yeah. And I was just like, whoa. <laughs> 
It's like, how cool is that? So, you know, and your character as well, you, the way you come into the show, can you explain to me a bit more about her? I don't mind spoilers, mm-hmm. by the way. I know I've not seen it. So obviously, yeah, um, well, th- this is a situation where um, reality was sort of helpful for the character because uh, Natalie is her name. She is an outsider coming into this world of, yeah. um, you know, these guys who all know each other very well. And who definitely like have a way of doing things. And that's the biggest thing that she comes up against is she's, she's there. Um, the Navy's brought her in to study, um, you know, how these guys move, how they eat, how they rest, how they exercise, you know, what happens when they go into these high octane situations and to try to see like what effect all of that has on their body and their minds and then put a program in place to ultimately increase their career longevity. So yeah. the, the, the greater aim is to help them, but, um, it's a very vulnerable thing to have somebody look at all these aspects of your being. And so she gets a lot of resistance because of that. And, um, and especially from, um, David's character, Jason, who is, is Bravo one. And, you know, that is his identity, Bravo mm-hmm. one. And we've seen throughout the series that he sort of has trouble with every other part of his life, but this <laughs> yeah. is the thing that he does well. Um, and so now that he is sort of having to deal with the wear and tear of this many years of being Bravo one and mm-hmm. having to face, um, an injury and trying to decide the best way through that, um, he is very hard headed. And, uh, what I love about her is that once again, she's, she's this, you know, kind of authority figure who has a real steady calm and a lot of patience Mm-hmm. And I think that she also just has so much compassion and respect for what these guys do. So yeah. she knows that she has to be a little pushy because otherwise no one's going to pay attention to her. But ultimately, like, it, it's for the the best interests of these guys. And trying to convince them to see that is another matter. So, uh, but yeah, it was, I mean, it, it was any time I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm, and it always sort of feels like you're a transfer student when you come into a long running show. Cause it's yeah. like everyone else already knows the teachers and has all the books and mm-hmm. knows the class schedule and you're trying to catch up. <laughs> um, but all of that was actually really useful for, for Natalie. Um, and, uh, and it, it's nice when, when things kind of line up like that and you can use them in your work. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I mean, I know there's that interest between Natalie and, uh, and, Jason as well. Oh, well, um, now you're giving a spoiler. You I haven't know, even seen it. You I've not even seen that. it. Because I, all I have to do is look at Twitter. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I go onto Twitter in the morning. It's like, great, yeah. thanks. You've just spoiled the rest of the season. <laughs> exactly. You, you, yeah. can't, you, know, you, can't, you can't avoid it. Plus, obviously, people, and people were sending questions in. I was like, who's Natalie? And then I gave a full synopsis. Yeah. I was like, right, <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> But, well, um, I think you still enjoy it. Even oh, of though course, it won't I, I Yeah, I don't. I, I've had you yeah, have so many spoilers over the things. I just, I just sit back and enjoy the show. I don't care what people think or say. It's great. But Shirley Valentine, who is at Shirley, oh, I've got to get oh eight one oh nine six two nine. She'll know who she is if I've got that number wrong. That's okay. the, <laughs> is. Did you have any input for this into being Natalie uh, on Seal Team as well? Because obviously that relationship for example you know the therapy broke all the rules with you know mm-hmm. between that and bravo ron that's that has broken a lot of rules um, yeah and she, she was like to know if did you agree with the way that story was taken i mean i guess it's you have got, you got no did i agree with it i mean i think it definitely makes for interesting drama because it is it is like yeah. not the smartest move <laughs> yeah, exactly um and uh one of the things that's been most enjoyable about it is um, most of my scenes are with David and he's just such a committed actor. He's so passionate. He's so mm-hmm. curious. He really wants to find the most interesting way through these scenes and the, and the, the greatest truth about these characters as complicated yeah. and messy as it is. So in that sense, um, you know, he and I, have definitely like improvised some in a lot of our scenes. And, and even if we find our way back to the script, there's, there's so much random stuff that, that, you know, if he goes off on a tangent, I just follow him. And sometimes (laughs) like we will not find our way back to the scene, but in doing that, um, we discover really useful stuff about the characters. And so that has all informed 
kind of the the evolution of Natalie. So in that sense, I've I have had some some input. Um, and uh, and yeah, I I would agree that it's not it it's not a super rational choice to get involved with him. <laughs> um, it complicates things for both of them because it is, you know, they're, they're, they work together and now they're even more exposed to the people around them. But, Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that becomes a real complication for them throughout the season, but makes for good television. Oh yeah. (laughs) Very, very true. So as you know, ethics of ethics as well of a a therapist looking into that too. So there you go. Um, Mm -hmm. Michelle Padden's asking, what can we expect from SEAL team? Because obviously it's a, it's a mid season break at the moment in the States, isn't it? That's right, yeah, yeah, which is always so weird to me I, because yeah, we're, I that. <laughs> we've shot through, I think the last episode to air was episode 10, and I think mm-hmm. now we're on like 16 or 17. Yeah. Um, so we see a bit more character development for Nancy Yeah, and, I mean, you will continue to see complications for her and Jason, but also um, he is finally starting to really confront some of the things that he's just avoided about his, you know, the way that he has dealt with his family, the way that he holds Bravo in the number one position in his life. Um, so he's trying to deal with a lot of that. Um, and there's, there's other shakeups that happen within Bravo. He's not the only one that's sort of getting a new look at things. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it, it's, it's pretty, it's exciting, all the things that are sort of changing the way everyone thought they were supposed to be within this this group of guys definitely i mean i think that's what people do love about the show is the fact that you've got that mix of the action and then you do have that personal life you know for some people yeah. it's they want more they want more action but it is a nice mix to see the life and i think this the show in itself has been so vital i mean it's a fantastic show you've got 300 veterans working on it from everything from I, I, they were telling me everything from the guys doing the makeup uh and you know and run, doing the runner jobs right through to being actually in bravo team you know it's yeah amazing um but they do so much to support the veterans and those veterans affairs i think as well um, yeah you know you've got i'm not going to name name the person but you've got some really very powerful people making some very idiotic statements about brain injuries from the impacts of missiles mm. lately. And that was the whole Swanee story was the, was yeah. trying to highlight that is actually an issue. That is a major issue. And a lot of people, soldiers are suffering from it. Mm-hmm. Um, so those kind of things are great. I don't want to get into politics. <laughs> that's, a, that's a no-no. <laughs> I, I rant on that on my face, but that's that. I'll leave that separate. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, it's such a powerful show. And obviously characters like Natalie, you've come in and you're doing that and you're, and you're showing that passion, you're showing that support and you're showing that there is actually, there is that care and, uh, and it's it's changed over the years now and we have got mm-hmm. that care for people and and they're looking out to see how the you know how their guys how their soldiers are actually bearing up to all the stresses that they go through it's brilliant well and that i mean to me when i started um working on this character and kind of looking into what somebody in her position would do um it it just it, it strikes me anew every time like when i really think about oh my gosh, how do you train and go into the highest stress situations possible and be ready for any threat and, you know, shoot to kill? How on earth do you do that with part of your life and then expect to come back to the rest of your life and just have any kind of balance? Yeah. I don't know how, how anyone would do that. Um, and I love that the show investigates that. And, uh, and Chris Trulak, who created it, I worked with him several years ago on a show called Southland that he did, Mm -hmm. which sort of looked at cops the way that this is, is looking at the, the personal dynamics of these, these seals and looked at how, um, the pressures of of being a police officer, how that impacted their personal lives. And I'm just so glad that he's making shows like that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's something that does need to come. I mean, I've got friends who are ex, um, special forces and I know they've struggled immensely. They were in like Gulf war one and stuff. And, Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, it took years for them to actually be diagnosed that they had PTSD. And I've seen the yeah. troubles on that. It's just horrible. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's vital. It's great that a show is as entertaining as it is and has the great yeah. storylines, but at the same time is putting across a powerful message as well. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Cool. That actually brings me. I've got no more questions, family. This is. You'll be happy to know, or you maybe. <laughs> I've enjoyed the questions. Oh, thank you. This is actually yeah. So um, before I draw this to a close. 
Actually, now I've got a signature question. Actually, this is a, this, oh, okay. this is a complete. This is my, I've nearly forgot. It's a off the wall, by the way. Um, I had a guy come on. He's actually from Star Wars. He was in uh, and played Neen Num, but he's also worked with Jim Henson. And he came mm. on my show. Someone asked me the question, and I thought, you know, that's such a offbeat question, but it's a good personality question. Okay. If you could have a Muppet created after your own personality, what kind of Muppet would it be? Wait, what do you mean? What kind of Muppet? Yeah, would, would it be like Kurt? You know, yeah, like what kind of personality? Would that oh, be? <laughs> oh Horror, it's a horrible I, one to think of. <laughs> I don't, I don't know all of their names. I just know what they look like. Um, <laughs> who would I be like? Who are, who are those two? And I might be thinking of Fraggle Rock, but that's also Jim Henson. The yep, two that are just always like off to the side, like they never stop moving. They always have something to chime in on everything. I sort of feel like that's. Who I might be. I know who you mean. I just can't remember their names either. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to get my phone and see if I can <laughs> figure it out. The two, are they the old ones? They're not the old ones, are they? I don't think that's who I'm thinking of. No, because that, that was Sattler and Waldorf, the ones who sit in the theatre all the time. Yeah, no. no. Oh, there's too many Muppets to try to <laughs> figure that out. Cool. I see it was red, actually, Fraggle Rock Red, from talking to you and, know, and seeing you on Twitter. They say we were all very well, lively. Well, that's what's in my mind, <laughs> the, the, the creature that I'm thinking of, whether it's a Fraggle or a Muppet. <laughs> they both count. Cool. That's yeah. a great answer, anyway. I had um, someone on, and uh, she came on, and she actually had her own Muppet character made after her, which was amazing. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was. It was, kind of, it was ace. Cool. So in, just before I flinch, finish, um, anything you would like to say to people who are watching, uh, sorry, who are listening <laughs> to, to this? I just want to say thank you. Um, I mean, because I would not get to do what I have gotten to do without fans supporting the work. And, and I just feel so, so blessed. Um, and I love, like, for, for all of the ups and downs of social media, I love that it, it does give me a chance to connect with fans. Because, you know, again, that's something that you get in theater. You have your audience right there. Yeah. And so it's a relationship that you can really feel. And you don't always feel that when you're, in television, unless you get to meet fans like out in the world or at a convention and social media sort of provides that. So I just feel so, so lucky. And, um, thank you is really sums up everything I want to say. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> Emily, that was absolutely fantastic. So enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, some great insights there and, uh, yeah. Really appreciate it. Just really appreciate the time that you've taken to come and chat to me on Hellblazer Biz. Everyone who sends in questions, thank you so much. Uh, that's brilliant. I hope you got the answers that you were you were looking for, or hope there were some answers there that you didn't think of. <laughs> anyway, you have been watching Chris Gordon with Emily Swallow on Hellblazer Biz. Until next time, sayonara. <laughs>